Hello there, it's that time of the week where we run through all of this week's major news from the world of Azeroth and with some pretty big news for the world within, so do stay tuned for that. But first, let's start off with Mop Remix. And one of the hot topics for the community has been the very high cost of upgrading gear in the new event. After Blizzard ended last week with a surprise per character bonus of 40,000 bronze for reaching level 70, for players who had not been doing the now notorious Gulp Frog farm, there's been a lot of speculation that we'd likely see either a nerf to upgrade costs or a further buff to bronze. This week Blizzard provided us with a midweek developer note on Mop Remix to reveal that they do not plan to change the costs of upgrading gear. Blizzard went on to say that they don't want anyone to second guess their decisions to upgrade and also pointed to the 40k bronze as one of the multiple ways that we can use to obtain desired cosmetics. In my opinion, for players who focus either on cosmetics or an increase in character power, this is probably fair. On the collecting side, that 40k bronze can buy quite a lot, especially of the exclusive to remix items. And once you have hit 171 character and got the infinite power 12 achievement, any additional alts start with a 100% XP buff, which increases further as they level up. This means that leveling multiple characters can be a very fast way to get quite a lot of bronze. On the player power side, when combining gear upgrades with accumulating more power in the cloak, characters are getting very strong indeed, and raids at all difficulties are getting faster and faster and easier to farm, meaning that bronze acquisition is only going to speed up over time for those players. Where I think things may be less rosy are for players who want both, but don't have a lot of time. For players who can farm the daily raids, I think there's going to be plenty of time to get everything, both upgrades and bronze. But for players who can't do that every day or at least every other day, I do think there's going to be a struggle and my advice is that if that's you, then you probably need to decide what's more important and either to focus on one or the other. I do think that a lot of this stems from the decision to use the same currency for upgrade and cosmetics. Had they been separated, I think things would have been a lot better for those players who have less time to spend on the game. Now, after last week's brief game of cat and mouse between the devs and the community where Blizzard nerfs farms almost as soon as players found them, things are seeming to now settle down a bit. There are still a few popular farms out there, but these ones are at least so far being left alone by the devs. I suspect that this is in part due to these newer farms being a bit less extreme and thus less likely to cause players to get far too far ahead and the devs are probably becoming a little bit more willing to let things just play out without much more interference. That doesn't mean there are no adjustments from the devs though. Early in the week, the Cloak of Infinite potential appeared to be somewhat less infinite when it was discovered by the community that the Cloak's stamina cap was 200,000. That's a lot, but it's certainly not infinite. Obviously, computers cannot do an infinity and there has to be a cap, but this seems to be quite a bit lower than they think might have been needed by technical limitations. The good news is that Blizzard seems to have agreed with this as the cap for most of those attributes has now been increased from 200k to 10 million. This number is probably high enough that very few, if any, players will ever hit it and the cloak will at least start to feel a bit more infinite for the majority of us. Blizzard have also made a further round of scaling adjustments, this time for group content between 60 and 70, along with adjustments to heroic and mythic raids to, as Blizzard put it, give a bit of a smoother transition between the difficulties. Along with last week adjustments, this should hopefully reduce the issues that players have been having with losing power as they approach level 70. We also saw one of our first rounds of tuning for the remix gems, with buffs for Arcanist Edge, Fervor, Righteous Frenzy and Searing Light, but also nerfs for Slay and Ward of Salvation. Now I'm certainly been having a lot of fun in remix, as are most of the people that I've spoken to. Personally, I've been focusing on completing the campaign stories and getting all of the mounts. I'm still playing Season 4 a lot, so I don't really want to get involved in trying to progress both Season 4 and Remix at a high level, but the friends who have been doing the raid scene and Remix are certainly having a bit of a ball with it. If you haven't any way been put off by any of the discussion or issues, I still do recommend giving it a try. It's probably the best ending to a World of Warcraft expansion we've ever seen, no matter what your preferred playstyle is. 
it does have a few issues but honestly when you get in and start playing it those issues aren't really enough to spoil it now let's get over to the war within the biggest news this week came from blizzard with the announcement that the war within's beta will begin next week on the 5th of june Usually the launch of a WoW beta is more of a progress milestone than any major changes to the test build, but this one does have some extra significance because people who pre-purchased the epic edition of The War Within are getting guaranteed access to the beta. Up until now, the pre-purchase has been a little bit ambiguous about the timing of that guaranteed access, but this announcement has confirmed that the epic edition purchasers will be getting day one access to the beta which probably means a lot more folk trying it out than usual, which could be interesting as the beta only has two realms, and that's for the entire world. Now Blizzard probably do have plans for this to make sure there's capacity, but equally this could potentially turn into a little bit of a stress test, so my advice is to try not to be too stressed if you find it's a little bit hard to get into the servers next week. Now, if this is your first time on beta or even a PTR test realm, I do have a few survival guide tips for you. First of all, don't expect to be able to use most of your add-ons. New expansions come with a bunch of changes to the game client that breaks many add-ons, and this time around is no exception. Many add-ons are produced by solo developers who have real-life families and jobs, and it can take quite a while for them to catch up with the changes. In fact, in my experience, only the really big add-ons ever get versions released for WoW beaters, which means the majority will only be getting released at or around the pre-patch launch. Number two, do keep in mind that beta is super temporary. Character wipes are pretty common, so if you get easily frustrated by losing all the progress in a character, you might want to limit what you do on the beta. Number three, expect issues. WoW beaters are remarkably complete and stable, but they are definitely not perfect. Servers can and do go down without warning and are sometimes unavailable for days at a time. Things do break and even working features can be a little bit strange on the test realms. Number four, do expect latency. The test servers are in the US only and for those of you in Europe and beyond, you're going to experience a lot more latency and lag than you're perhaps useful. But don't worry, it is still perfectly playable. And number five and finally, don't expect access to everything. While most of the open world is accessible, things like Raid and Mythic Plus are generally only available for short periods of time for highly focused testing. These events are announced on the World of Warcraft forums, so it is good to get into the habit of checking in on those if you do want to contribute to those types of tests. Now, if you're not joining the beta, don't worry. I do plan to do a series of deeper looks into what's being revealed by the alpha and beta tests, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when those videos go live. But what about all of you? What are you most excited to dive into and explore on the beta? Or are you planning to avoid it all and just go into the new expansion completely cold? Do let me know in the comments down below. A couple of weeks ago, I discussed if the timing of the end of Mock Remix could be hinting towards a September release window for The War Within. The timing of this beta does for me very much seem to be on schedule for that kind of release. In my opinion, it's fairly likely that Blizzard are currently targeting the week that Remix ends, that is August the 20th for the pre-patch. Pre-patches tend to last around 2-4 to four weeks and that would place the expansion launch somewhere around about September 10th to 24th. Now of course, plans like that can change, especially in game development, so I do suggest taking those types of dates with a very large amount of salt. In the meantime, we did get a new alpha build this week with a bunch of new discoveries. Please keep in mind that while I avoid story spoilers, I will be covering gameplay and systems changes in this next section. This week's build revealed the new Mythic Plus KSM mount for Season 1. We already knew it was going to be a mech suit, but we can now take a look at what it looks like. The new mount is the Diamond Mech Suit. I personally am not a huge fan of the colour scheme, but the model itself is pretty cool. Assuming Blizzard follow the same pattern as Dragonflight, we'll likely see recolors of this later in the expansion for other Mythic Plus seasons, and I think that it does have the potential to deliver something really cool with one of those recolors, so I'm going to be keeping my fingers crossed on that front. 
Staying in the subject of Mythic Plus, and Wowhead has data mined four new placeholder affixes. Now, there's absolutely no information about these affixes currently beyond a couple of icons which may also be placeholders, but it is good to see signs that Blizzard are planning to make changes to the affixes in Mythic Plus. I just hope that they learn the right lessons from the introduction of Incorporeal and Afflicted in Dragonflight. Those two affixes, in my view, are among the worst affixes I've ever had to deal with, and I'd certainly not shed a tear if they are the ones that end up getting replaced. Right back at the start of the war within Alpha and Blizzard announced that Diplomacy, the human ratio that gives 10% extra reputation, was going to be replaced. This did kind of make sense because with account wide reps it would likely have made rolling a human feel very mandatory for many players. Well, the new replacement has now been revealed. It's called No Place Like Home and offers a 5 minute reduction in Hearthstone cooldown and a second charge for your Hearthstone, which means it's now even just slightly more powerful than the double hearth that shamans get. I do think that this is kind of cool, but it is going to feel a lot less powerful than Diplomacy did. In Dragonflight, Blizzard did attempt to take the seasonal content beyond just the usual raid, Mythic Plus and PvP by delaying the Elemental Storms in 10.02 and the Researchers under Fire event in 10.10 until the raids for those respective patches opened up. In my opinion, this didn't really work out, mainly because the gear from those events was no better than could have been gotten from other pre-season content, especially in 1002 where the rares were a major gearing meta pre-raid. Blizzard didn't carry this approach forward into patch 10.2.0 in Season 3, so it does seem that they came to the same realisation, albeit a little belatedly. Delves do seem to me to be a much better candidate for inclusion in seasonal content, especially as they can go up to heroic raid level gearing, and it seems that Blizzard have decided this too. Level 1 to 3 of the Delves will be available from the launch of the expansion, with levels 1 and 2 being available for leveling, but level 4 and above won't be opening until the season does, or in other words, not until Mythic Plus, Rated PvP and the raid become available. In recent expansions, the first season has started about two weeks after the launch of a new expansion. It is possible this could change this time, especially with the early access, but I do still think that about two weeks is what we're most likely to get. Moving over to the live game, and as you might expect, things are really starting to wind down news-wise. But that's not to say there's absolutely nothing, as today marks the start of a new month and with it a brand new trading post. This month's post has a decidedly summery theme, with a surfboard theme mount, the pearlescent goblin wave shredder, and a very colourful new beach chair choy. The colours theme here very much reminds me a lot of the beach deck chairs that were very much the norm in my childhood. Other highlights include beach and swimwear transmog, a water pistol styled weapon transmog, and don't worry if you don't think you'll have the tendies for that gun, or if you cannot use a gun as the monthly reward for maxing out on the monthly activities is a water rifle toy. The monthly rewards have been a bit meh of late, but this one for me is a bit of a return to form. If you're feeling a bit short of stuff to do, this week's PvP brawl is Comp Stomp. If you're not familiar with Comp Stomp, it's basically the Arathi battleground against NPC AI enemies. Runs rarely last more than 5 minutes and are almost guaranteed wins, and that makes them a great way to farm maps of honour or honour points for PvP related transmog. This coming week also sees the start of Cataclysm Time Walking, which includes the Firelands Raid, and on Thursday, the Thousand Boat Bash Mini Holiday. The Thousand Boat Bash takes place in Thousand Needles and involves doing a few quests that reward a mini boat that can travel at high speed over water that you can use for a maximum of 7 days. This event usually features in the trading post activity log and it can be a great way to farm up those 10 days. Over in Cataclysm Classic and the Phase 1 raids and dungeons are now live. The raids include Bastion of Twilight, Blackwind Descent and Throne of Four Winds. As has become a tradition, the race to world first for the raid tier was quickly over, with the guild Dumb and Dumber taking the title for completing all the raids in 10 man, and Progress doing the same for the 25 man versions. My congratulations go to both of those guilds. 
Well, that's all the news for this week. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, now is a great time to hit that button. Subscribing is by far the best way to support a channel like mine. And if you want to see more news like this, please do hit the like icon to let me know. There's going to be loads more news, opinions, previews and guides coming real soon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.